So it is so much fun to run into friends and people we follow on YouTube and do the same thing. Uh, that's why we like to come to these events. It's more fun than seeing the RVs sometimes. Indeed. So you guys, the Fit RV, we had you on the podcast uh, several it's be a couple years ago. A couple ago, years, yeah. Couple yeah. Years, yeah. yeah. Tell us uh, what's up with you guys these days. Where have you been? Where are you going? And what excites you about this uh, RV lifestyle we all share? Let's see. So I think since we were on your podcast, we uh, we did an RV trek to Europe. Ooh, we uh, yes. we RVed around in the Alps for a couple for a couple weeks right. and went to the RV show there in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, and we got a cat. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's been a whole new world for us. RVing with a cat is it changes everything. So now, do you ever do you ever RV with the dog? No, no, we don't have a dog. So, so I don't I don't know how to reference what a cat does, but it right. seems that they're much more self sufficient than a dog. They are, but you know how you can let your dog out, take your dog for a walk, and the dog loves to go out for a walk. Our cat doesn't love to go out so much. We do put the cat on a leash and a harness and try to take that'll, him out. That'll get you some funny stares. Yes. <laughs> I was, was going to say. But, yeah. Yeah. He, he's actually, we, we started him very young, and so he actually does pretty well, both in he the does. RV. You know, some cats, you put him in a vehicle, they just, and then he doesn't do that. He just, you know, sacks out and goes to sleep. Right. And the litter box is a challenge though too, because with a dog, you don't have to worry about having a litter box in the rig. And so that's been a challenge for us because we're in a camper van and we're already space challenged, but so we to, figured it out. Yeah, to have to dedicate space for that was... Yeah, was, yeah you guys are in a uh, Winnebago Travato. We are. It's a class uh, B. Our class B. Yes. Uh, so we kind of share that background. And I'm still amazed that uh, I love the title of your of your whole YouTube stuff, uh, the Fit RV. Yeah. Uh, James, you kind of concentrate on the Fit RV as a vehicle. Right. And Stephanie, of course, you are a model of fitness on the road. That's right. Something that we can be honest with and say is not shared by most RVers. <laughs> well. <laughs> That's, I think there's a lot of reasons for that. It's really hard when we're out of our routine. When we're on the road, everything's dynamic and every day is changing. And But when we're home in the sticks and bricks, we have our routines. And so fitness is an easier thing to do when you're in a stable setting. But on the road, it just throws all that out the window and it's hard to keep fitness as a focus. And there's that whole vacation mindset that comes into play too. We're out in the RV, you know, I'm on vacation. I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat that, you know, and, and you wouldn't do that at home but right. you know if you think about it you wouldn't you wouldn't say I'm on vacation I'm not gonna take my blood pressure medication you wouldn't do that yeah. so you just need to think of it a little differently yeah. and it's just now, part of a, life you're a big uh, booster of bands right Exercise resistance bands, bands. Yeah. yes well they're portable they're light and they're cheap and so we do encourage people to travel with resistance bands because it's a great way to get your strength in. And again, taking a walk is easy in the RV. You can just open up the door and go, but the strength part gets more challenging. So yeah, bands are a great way to get the strength going. Yeah, and the, the space challenge thing is, is yeah. comes into play with the bands. You can do a lot with a little bit of equipment. We'll, uh, we'll link to a couple, maybe you can refer to a couple of your favorite uh, workouts okay. or ideas for working. We'll put a link in the show notes because we're all we're all yeah. doing this together here to, to, to share the right. lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, James, what about the fit RV itself? Keeping an RV fit. You know, I try to do. I try to do. Or we do RV content, but I try to make it. We try to make it more amusing than just this is how you would check your right. tire pressure right. in the RV. So we try to make it a little more entertaining than that. Sometimes we we don't quite hit the mark, but sometimes we do. Like latest stuff we did uh, we did a piece on weighing your rv hugely important thing not that many people actually bother to do it so six and a half years of doing this i've never weighed my rv you bad 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 <laughs> So because I'm afraid of what it'll say. You're, well, you're a class B, so you're probably in better shape than, right. than a lot of rigs. Yeah. But it's really easy. So there, there's, you know, you see the cat scales at truck stops, and we've all been to truck stops. And you see the cat scales. There's an app. You can set up the app on your phone, and then basically you just drive right on to the scale, and it, you, do, you don't even have, you don't need the big long stick to hit the, to hit the button to call the waymaster. You don't have to even go inside. 
So we did that video, and to make it amusing and to show how easy it was, we actually made Steph do the weighing in an evening we, gown and heels. We made Steph. James bribed me to wear an evening gown and heels to do the weighing at the truck stop. It was a little ridiculous, but at the same time, the video was kind of useful. So. Yeah. And if you want to get noticed at a truck stop, wear an evening dress and heels. So the serious side of that, why is that so important? Well, no, let's be really blunt about it. RV manufacturers don't really share very well just how much or how little you can really store without exactly. going Exactly. So there are a number of reasons why weighing your rig is important. Uh, the first, as you're alluding to, you want to make sure you're not overweight. It's a, it's a safety thing, right? A lot of these, especially, I, I find it more in like the smaller sea coaches, you know, that are, that are maybe built on, on some of these van chassis. They come out of the factory pretty close to, to max weight. You can only put a few hundred pounds of stuff, including people, in them. So that's one reason. Another reason is setting your tire pressure properly. You should know how much your rig weighs so that you know how much load each tire is carrying so you can set your tire pressure properly. Um, towing is something that comes into play with weight. You know, if you want to tow something, and we actually, since we got the cat, we tow sometimes a little trailer now. Um, Wait, if you want the cat has the trailer? <laughs> The, 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 because we need the litter box in the van, we normally store our race bikes inside ah. the van, but now we have to have another place for our bikes and we don't want to carry them on the outside bike rack because they're expensive and they're also our babies. So we got a little tiny 4x6 okay. trailer to carry our bike supplies. When we bring... When we bring the cat. When we bring the, the cat. So you always know if we have the cat because yes. we'll have the trailer on there. Yes. <laughs> um, so, but towing, again, is another reason why it's just important to know how much your rig weighs. And it's really easy to do and not enough people do it. And so we made the video to kind of try to encourage people to do that. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So we talked about the vacation mode and that doesn't, you know, it's just, yeah. you can't live life every day on vacation. Right. We talked a little bit about um, the fitness bands, but uh, the importance of staying active and, and moving around. Right. What, what are some of the couple of quick tips that you would offer people? Well, I think some of it starts with our mindset. You know, we have to understand why we need to exercise. And, you know, we, we're in, throughout our lifespans, we're in two different phases. We're either in a phase of growth or we're in a phase of decaying. And I know that sounds very depressing that we're in a decaying <laughs> mode, but it's just... Okay, this is <laughs> <a good> <laughs> it's the physiologic, you know, it's yeah. physiological part of our bodies that once we hit a certain age, things start to decline. So exercise becomes so important as we're aging because really the only way to switch our modes back to growth phase is through exercise. It's by breaking down our muscle tissue and rebuilding it stronger so we're in growth phase again. And as we age, if we don't exercise, we stay in that decay phase and that's when we start to age and seeing the negative effects aging has on our bodies. So my number hiking, yeah, hiking, hiking. Biking. So, so my number one tip of, of all the tips we've given for staying fit in the air, my fa absolute favorite one is our two hour rule. Okay. Um, and that's, you know, if you're out driving or something like that, every two hours, stop, get out of the van or your RV or do something, get some activity that could be a short roadside attraction. It could be just doing some push ups in a rest area. It could be get out and move every two hours. Now, yeah. how long should we move? More 15 minutes, oh, yes, right. 15 minutes. Point. You had to ask that question. <laughs> and we it? have to, and we try to make those stops fun. Like we'll find some interesting roadside attraction, mm -hmm. stop, check it out, and then we'll do some push-ups on the RV or some step-ups in and out of it, or we'll jog around the RV. So we, uh -huh. that two-hour rule is definitely one of our big ones. Now, that's your two-hour rule. We have a 3.30 rule. 3.30. 3.30, which is, uh, you know, unless you have to be someplace, yeah. like we've just driven two marathon days of 12 hours a day, but mm -hmm. generally when we're going someplace, stop by 3.30 in the afternoon. Excellent. Or drive no more than 330 miles, so that then you have some time at the end of the day to tour, see places, Wonderful. walk around the campsite, not have to back in after dark. 
yeah. you hit that uh, that uh, electric box because you but can't see it. Sometimes our three thirty rules, three thirty a.m. <laughs> <laughs> we had, we've had that rule we, too. We've had yeah. those days. Yes, so, but I love that rule because it's also making the drive be part of the vacation and part of the fun. So you're not just pushing through and taxing your body. You're actually enjoying the journey too. Well, I will put links on the show notes and in the video description. Uh, but why don't you tell everybody who's too lazy to look at that uh, how they can find the Fit RV? Uh, they can just go to our website, thefitrv.com. We also have Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. Yeah, search any of those or even just Google for the Fit RV and you'll find us. All right, thank you guys so much. Thanks for having us, Mike and Jennifer.